Well, hello there. My name is Vlad. Welcome to my studio today. I nearly dropped the guitar. Today we are checking out a new pedal range from G Lab called Rebel. I'm saying Rebel like that just because there was this Swedish uh, hair metal band some years ago that had a song called Rebel. And I kind of liked the song and they were screaming Rebel and all of the things and important stuff. You really wanted to know that. Yeah, G Lab Rebel Pedal Series. Um, I believe these are pretty budget friendly. As of shooting this video, the pedal range hasn't been released yet, so I don't know the exact pricing. But based on their size and features and everything, they should be pretty budget friendly. And as you can see, they have a pretty cool, unique design. Uh, kind of front of the pedals looks similar on all six pedals there's a nice color thing happening on the sides the leds are kind of color matched to the sides of the pedals they're pretty simple things like three controls for each of the pedals but the range of the pedals kind of varies from a fuzz to a chorus to a drive pedal to a booster pedal and two different type of reverbs that we're also going to check out uh quick mention they did actually also send me a wah pedal and this is a woo wee <laughs> wah that's what it says on the wah let's see if we can have it over here maybe not uh yeah never mind that uh a really cool wah pedal, there's several controls for like uh, deep control, bass control, uh, Q factor, volume, well, well basically whether it boosts two different kind of touch modes, uh, whether it's on when you start moving it or stuff like that. And it's also MIDI controllable as by the way are all of these pedals as well, there's a MIDI in and out on all of these uh, Rebel series pedals. And G Lab makes switches, which makes sense to have MIDI controllability on everything. Uh, I believe on these pedals, you can just turn them on or off via MIDI. Uh, on this wah pedal, you can also access or kind of program presets to access all of these different controls on the wah. So if you need several different wah sounds uh, and you want to be able to control them via some sort of switcher, for example, a G Lab switcher, haha. Uh, yeah. There's a wah pedal. What we're going to do first is go through all of the six pedals, check out some of the sounds, twist some knobs, so you can get the idea of what kind of pedals are in this range. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about things I really like about these and maybe some things that I might improve. I'm playing my Ibanez AZ2042, something like that. I don't remember the exact model name. Two humbuckers, flat white finish. I got this few weeks ago as of shooting this video while I was 42 Gear Street. I've been playing this guitar non-stop. I love it. And we're going through from the guitar, not through the guitar, from the guitar into the pedal board and from the pedal board into the front end of Rev Dynamis over there. And it's on the clean channel and it's really clean. And from the dynamics we're going into Do Not Stop It All Life behind me, rev uh, closed back 4 by 12 as always. That's the clean sound, let's go for the fuzz. some signal coilish sounds. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not an expert on fuzz and I think I've also been kind of quite open that I'm not a huge fan of fuzzes in general. This few that have sometimes made my pedal board. Uh, I mean, it sounds good. That, that's a cool sound, like crank the volume and the gain quite a lot. I like this one. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I don't know how to use the fast and I'm not going to pretend that I do. So yeah, Glottic Chorus, by the way, the name of the pedal is Uproar Fuzz, as I hope you can see on the top cam. <laughs> That's a nice chorus sound. I think I used it uh, on several different rhythm guitar tracks and I think it worked really well in front of the Chaos Drive over here. So let's jump into that one. We'll blend in the chorus a little bit later. Chaos Drive. Okay, this is a good one. Also push the front end of the arm. Um, and that's how you lose the key. Never mind that. I like this one a lot. N again, no idea on the pricing yet, but if it's, I want to say within like a hundred euro range, this is a good drive. I mean, it takes you from this. Oh yeah, and blending the chorus.
sounds cool and kind of three-dimensional, if you will. Then moving on to the Adrenaline Booster, which, as the name suggests, is a booster. I wonder if this is like just a kind of clean gain boost sort of speed. To me, this can be used as, like, you know, a make good road pedal, that might be a term, where you have it set, like, on a mild setting spot, like, and you kind of don't notice it. It's like a slight overdrive happening. But when you take it out, the sound suddenly becomes a bit more kind of dull, and you want to engage this again. So I could see myself using this as an always-on pedal, or obviously I can boost the front end of the amp quite a lot. Yep, like that one. Then we go, well, I'm gonna say it right away, these two might be my favorites from the pedal range. The Quiver Reverb, which is, let's see. It's a whole reverb, to me at least, it sounds like a whole reverb. There's a low and high filter. Which basically filters out either the low end or the high end. So on the low setting it lets only kind of the lower frequencies to go through, which is cool. Yes, I think I'm hearing it correctly. Let's increase the... Yeah, <laughs> just so I don't give you false information. Again, there isn't information about this available on a website or anything like that yet. Uh, because as of shooting this video, these haven't been released. But yeah, that's a cool feature. Uh, then there's the time control. Which controls how fast the reverb comes when you... and also seems to increase the decay time. And there's also some modulation happening. This sounds really good. That's a good sound, like a really good reverb sound. And I like the fact that there's a dry wet control which allows you to kind of fine tune how much reverb you want in your overall signal, which I think all of the modulation pedals should have something like that. Yeah, a really good usable reverb that's kind of, it feels like it's out of the way and till you stop playing sort of speed. And then it kind of kicks in. Really cool. Then, uh, a spectral verb, which is, 
uh, shimmer type of thing. I'll just let you hear it and you can decide what, what it is. To me, it's a shimmer thing. It has a magic control as well, and we're going to go into that soon. <laughs> Let's go for minimum magic. So, so there's still quite a lot of reverb happening, but it doesn't have the shimmer thing on top. That's a lot of magic happening. <laughs> That's a short tail. Yeah, so time means the amount of tail. So as you can hear, you're really ambient with this. Actually, you can even like combine these two, and that's something I think I did in one of the tracks I recorded for the song in the beginning. So with the mix controls, you can set up a, kind of a, this part of your drive signal going through both of the pedals, and then there's always this kind of bed of ambience underneath. I don't know if that's the term, but like... I think that sounds really cool, like... Uh, these two are definitely my favorites out of the range. These are like good standard things that work really well and uh, I like the drives and boosters especially. Again, I'm estimating how much these will probably cost and they just sound really good. And they're easy to operate, yet they're pretty versatile with the controls. Just the three controls you get with those. So that's cool. So what do I think of the whole pedal range, you might ask? Uh, first of all, they feel super solid, they look cool, uh, they just feel really well built and they kind of stand out from the crowd a little bit, which is always good because the pedal market is just ridiculously oversaturated. And if you can come up with a like a physical design that looks different, that's always a plus. Um, something that I also want to mention is that these pedals ship with a nice little bag, but there's a, two pieces of dual lock to attach the pedals to your pedal board and there's also this uh, what's it called like this jack jack thing which helps you connect the two pedals uh, i'm not 100 percent sure about these uh, because uh, if you watch cs guitars video on this topic uh, connecting your pedal with one of these kind of puts strain on both of both input jacks of your pedals when you hit them and as you can see here, the pedal moves a little bit and because this ha doesn't have any flexibility, uh, it might over time damage the output and input jacks of your pedals. Uh, so I'm not sure about this, but I mean, it's a nice touch. Comes also with two screws. There's two screw kind of holes at the bottom. So you can like attach these pedals to your pedal board using the screws as well. I think some pedal board designs have that option. So that's really cool. A uh, few things, uh, I'm not sure about, first of all, uh, the decision to have the LEDs always on, like this is off, this is on, uh, 
when all of these pedals are turned off it's kind of difficult to distinguish which one are ones are actually on uh, when you do have one of these on it's kind of easier to spot there's uh, enough difference in the brightness of the led but i'm not sure about that uh, i might have added something somewhere here like a red color on the g-lab logo or something like that uh, so this could be just off and on instead of like dim red light and really bright one because if you stack up the pedals like this uh, you cannot quickly kind of see which one is which because they're kind of color coded and have similar controls and stuff it might not be an issue an actual issue uh, but i can imagine on a dark stage uh, you might get slightly confused or maybe not i haven't tried these in a kind of uh, low light situation so i wouldn't know to be honest uh, the slanted design is really cool, especially if you're using a pedal board that is just flat. As you can also see, like with these two, I wouldn't be able to turn this pedal off or on uh, because I would keep hitting this one because of the slanted design. Uh, though I have to say it might be a problem with other pedals as well, just due to the nature of this pedal board. But yeah, that's something to consider depending on what kind of pedal board setup you have. Love the capability of controlling these with MIDI or turning them on and off. I'm sure some people uh, will really appreciate that. I mean, all of them sound good. They're well built. Few interesting design choices uh, that may or may not be a problem for you. Uh, again, no idea on the pricing, but I believe these are budget range pedals. Uh, when this video comes out, the pedals have been released, so you can check the pricing by following the link in the description. And thank you G-Lab for sending these pedals. Thanks for the wah pedal as well. I'm afraid I have no idea how to demo a wah pedal. It does a wah thing and you can fine tune the wah sound a little bit and you can MIDI control it. That's it. It's a good wah pedal. Uh, I just, ne I've never used one. <laughs> so I think it just doesn't make sense to try to make like a proper demo with that. But yeah, links below to these pedals in the description. And also do all the YouTube things like share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, a Catwick Studios t-shirt, follow the links below in the description and all that stuff. Thanks for watching this video. I shall see you next time.